and if you followed what we just said, all of these mutations are equally likely to occur because the processes that give rise to mutations can't discriminate on the basis of their consequences for the function of the gene or the function of the organism. Now, I want to take a minute to think about the evolution of mutation rates. Why do we have the mutation rates that we have? We talked about mutation rates in an earlier lecture in this module. Why aren't mutation rates zero if most mutations are harmful? Why aren't they higher so we get more beneficial mutations? And, well, the factors we have to consider are first, that almost all new mutations are neutral or harmful. New mutations are rarely beneficial. We've said this a bunch of times. Second, preventing mutations is expensive for the cell. DNA polymerase hardly ever makes mistakes, but if it's going to be even more careful, it would have to go slower. It would have to spend more time proofreading, saying, did I, like a obsessive compulsive, did I check that base enough times? Maybe I should go back and check it one more time. Well, I'm not absolutely sure, so I'll throw that base out and try again. This error checking gets very expensive for the cell. If there were no beneficial mutations, well, that we can, from our perspective, we'll say, well, that would be bad because adaptation would stop, species would go extinct because they couldn't change. But natural selection doesn't care. Natural selection doesn't care whether adaptation happens or not. Natural selection doesn't care whether species go extinct. Natural selection is just a passive process that happens because we have heritable genetic variation. It's inevitable. And so mutation rates do evolve. They are a product of natural selection to find the best mutation rate for the organism. But the factors that natural selection considers are the cost of preventing the mutations and the harm that the mutations do. If there was no harm, the cell wouldn't bother preventing mutations at all. If the harm is really high, it's worth investing more resources in preventing mutations. These are the factors that determine what mutation rates natural selection has left us with. It's not the beneficial mutations or causing adaptation or saving species for extinction. These factors play very little, if any, role in determining mutation rates. So what we've done, we've addressed a big potential misunderstanding. The idea that somehow environmental effects can cause particular mutations to happen. They can't. This will also be important when we think about cancer genes because there's a lot of sense that, oh, maybe it's my fault that this happened. But in fact, that's not true. We have no control over which mutations happen. The mutations that we see are a special subset of the ones that arise, and that's because harmful mutations are eliminated by natural selection. The mutations that we see are a biased subset containing all the beneficial mutations and a lot of the neutral mutations, few of the harmful mutations. Finally, mutation rates are set by natural selection to minimize harmful changes, balancing that with the costs of preventing mutations, not to promote beneficial ones. Coming up next, we're going to think about the mutational events that create new genes. I hope to see you there.